Hey traders, welcome back to the last actually in the video series of candlestick patterns. If you haven't checked them out before, go and check out the other videos talking about all the candlestick patterns that I think are important. This one I'm talking about, the Harami, Harami, how do you pronounce it? I'm not even sure the best way to pronounce it. I guess it depends where you come from, but I do know it is Japanese for pregnant, or at least I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And it makes sense when we look at the candlestick pattern um, in the shape of the candles. Okay, so let's look, should we be bullish or bearish? Let's go with the bearish one. So the idea of this is you have a decent size candle and that's gonna be a nice bullish long candle. I'm gonna indicate that as green. So if you have your chart set up as green as your up candle, i.e. the close is higher than the open, that's what it looked like. If you haven't, then obviously the setting is accordingly. The next day you get, uh, let's keep it standard here. If I can get that off, uh, we have this which is a smaller candlestick, but it is red. Okay, and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do also the, the, the other way as well, very, very quickly. You don't wanna see me drawing candlesticks all the time, but we can talk about them and look at the different concepts. So this one is red and this one is green. Okay, um, excuse my coloring and they're two different things. Okay, right, let's have a look at what they mean. So the whole concept behind this is that's day one, that's day two. Day one, you've got a decent size move up, good, strong trend day, classical trend day, high, uh, low to high in the case of the uptrend, uh, low to high, low to, say it again, low to high in the case of an uptrend, and high to low in the case of a downtrend. 101 stuff, lower third, upper third, that nice, big, strong candle, decent volume. The next day, this is where the key comes in the key to the whole thing comes in. So you've got day one, day two. Day two, you get a gap lower. So the gap lower and then the subsequent price action cannot fill the gap, which potentially indicates indecision. Now, I don't think this is an actually a monster, monster, brilliant candlestick pattern to use. I think that it's, it's okay, but you get this quite often. Um, my take on this is, and I would see what your comments are about this below, guys, is that this is something that you have to use in a very specific scenario. So very specifically at the end of an exhaustion move or the end of perhaps an uptrend, you know, got a downtrend, you've kind of pulled back and looking for the short, something like that. I, I, this kind of thing happens so regularly that it needs to be put into the context of the bigger picture. But let's look at the, the, the sort of thesis behind the actual strategy. The fact that you gap lower here and you can't fill it and you kind of just sit there isn't really massively bearish. You don't really get this deep candle here that undoes all that work and it's not kind of a bearish engulfing either. It's more a case of, hey, with gap lower, if you were genuinely bullish and bulls were genuinely in control here, we would fill that gap at least. Yes, we may not go to new highs, but you would think if the bulls are in control here, then that is exactly what happened. And it doesn't happen. It's the same with the downtrend. You've got the downtrend move here. Um, you gap up. You'd expect if bears are in control for it to go straight away and fill that gap. It doesn't. Maybe it, it, it kind of tries to a bit, but does some work into yesterday's range. Um, now that really, to me, if you've got a different viewpoint on that, let me know. But to me, that really indicates a bit more indecision that potentially the trend could change. It's not as aggressive as perhaps some of the other candlesticks where you see, you do see a trend change. This might be a precursor for a trend change. So you might get this, and then really you wanna be maybe looking for the candle after being alert and saying, hey, that's not really as bearish as it should be. Balls maybe are taking a bit of a stand here. Let's see if the next day indicates a bit more strength. And then perhaps then you'd be looking for, you know, a follow through candle that takes out, maybe does a solid, a solid green candle like that rather than another one to kind of like that. Because something also, guys, which the textbook probably don't say, is that you may have this kind of thing while you're waiting for data. See if we're trading, you know, bonds or you know, crude oil or something that's, that's got data coming out on it. Perhaps you've got data coming out at this point here and you may get this kind of indecision. You may, yes, you may have had a downtrend, but you may get indecision where people back off the throttle a little bit, waiting to see what's gonna happen with this data. So, you know, you've gotta be a little bit cautious with this, but nevertheless, it is, is a pattern in its own right. Let's have a little look and see exactly what the textbooks say about it. You're pretty much as I've drawn here, they've got the larger candle, then you've got the second candle that kind of gaps away from the trend and stays within the body. Um, is there anything here that we should be thinking about? Potential buy signal, potential sell signal. 
Yeah, nothing much interest there. All makes perfect sense to me. How would we structure a buy and sell on this? Let's have a look. If we had a downtrend here, I would probably, as I say, I would probably want to wait and see a bit more commitment from the bulls. However, I guess you could kind of go long on a close here and use the low of that day uh, as your stop to keep it nice and tight. Or you could, if you wanted a bit more of a broader thing and you had a bit more of a longer term thesis on it, looking for a multi-day move, a multi-week move to highs, you could perhaps go under a stop under that low of that move there. Uh, that's kind of one way of looking at it. Or like I say, wait for the subsequent day and then maybe try and work something from a high break of there, assuming that that's your kind of trigger candle, if you like, or your frame kind of framework candle, and then go long up there with a stop under there, depending on, obviously depending on what your objective is, your time frame of trading, your day trading, swing trading, what you're looking for, and whether it's part of a longer term thesis. This kind of thing for me fits in as part of a puzzle with other things so that you have you've got something you've already earmarked as a long or as a short, you then see this, it adds like an extra layer of edge for you to have the confidence to take the trade, maybe gives you a bit more of a structure to frame your risk around. But that for me is kind of how this, how this pattern kind of works out. Anyway guys, listen, if you've got any comments on this, Stick them in the comments box below. I'll read them. I'll be interested to hear whether you think this is rubbish, whether you think this is good, whether it's the best thing ever and you've got another way of trading it and what market it works very well in. i uh, always love to hear your ideas on that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so because we have loads more videos like this, the candlestick patterns, chart patterns, technical analysis, psychology, discipline, strategy, setups, all that kind of good stuff to hopefully make us better, more successful traders. Take care out there guys, manage the risk, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.